What's up guys, it's Otsu, and today I have a tutorial on Future Card Buddy Fight. So in this video, I'm just going to go over what different types of cards there are, and the general rules of the game. So I'll try to be as in-depth as possible, but this will just be a quick overview, so I don't want this video to be super long. So starting off, uh, just going by the playmat, so as you can tell, you have three monsters on the field at a time. Here's your drop zone, so that's where you discard your cards, your deck, and your gauge. So you put cards in here when you, uh, it's a, it's Buddy Fight's way of resource management and resource system. So you put a card in here face down, and some cards will, uh, the cost of the card will be to pay a certain amount of gauge. So looking at this, here's a turn progression. So you starting phase, so you stand all your units, draw a card, and then you can do what's called charge and draw. So if you've watched the anime, you pick a card from your hand, put it into your drop zone, and then you get to draw a card. So this way you get to increase your gauge once per turn, and it also filters your hand every turn. So it's pretty nice, so if you draw like a dead card, you can get rid of it to put in your gauge and draw a new card. But then sometimes you'll have like a lot of really good cards and you don't want to discard any of them. And so it becomes you know, a tough choice you got to make. Do you want to increase your gauge to pay, play better spells or monsters? Or do you want to just be good with the hand that you have at the moment? And then so main phase. So this is where you can play your monsters, play spells, equip items. And then you go to your attacking phase where you can attack. And then... Unique to Buddy Fight is Final Phase, which is where you can play Impact cards. So Impact cards can, they can win you the game. Not all of them are like an all-in attack, uh, but the ones that, the more common one that we've seen so far is like an auto-win type of situation. But you have, there's a lot of restrictions on that card, so you don't have to uh, get all crazy about it. So first of all, I'll go over the monsters. So here's the monsters. So if you notice in the top left, there's numbers 0 through 3. So this is what's called the size of the monster. So when you're out on the field, on the battlefield, you can only have a total size of 3. So that means you can have 3 size 1 monsters, a size 2 monster and a size 1, or like a size 3. And then there's also a size 0, which is generally like a really weak unit. So you can have these don't count towards your size obviously so generally size 3 monster is bigger and fatty so this one has 9000 power the red number is power the white number is critical so if you deal if you deal direct damage to your opponent that's how much damage they will take and blue is defense so as you can tell from 0 to 3 the numbers tend to get higher And then there, there are spell cards. So spells you can only play during your main phase unless it has this word counter on it. So for anyone that plays magic, counter is basically instant. It means you can play it at any time, even during your opponent's turn. There are some cards that have restrictions on when you can play it. Like this one says you can only cast it during an attack on your opponent's turn and if you do not have a monster in the center then this, this card nullifies the attack. So it's basically like a perfect card, like in Vanguard. And this card, so you have to pay gauge in order to use it. And you can only cast it if I have five life or less, and I get to draw two cards. I can only cast this card once per turn. This card I can only play during my turn. And then the restriction is if I have a weapon equipped, and I do not have a monster in the center, that I gain four life. So these are spell cards. Uh, there's tons of different spells, especially if you play in the world Magic World. So these are Danger World cards, but Magic World, they're more focused on playing spells. For people that have played Magic, they're pretty much just blue control and red burn. They have cards that just say deal one damage, and uh, cards that bounce your creatures back to your hand or counter your spells. So next card type is items. So 
this is a weapon and you can only equip one weapon at a time you'd equip it right here where it says item and if you've seen the anime it's like you're joining your monsters and getting into the attack but you can only swing with the weapon if your center monster is clear if there's if your center monster is open and that's also the only way you can deal damage to your opponent is if there's no monster in the center so if you equip any wep if you equip a weapon and you want to be offensive, well, you take the risk and leave yourself open to attacks. So there's a balance, you know, you got to play with what's in your hand. Like maybe if I had this spell in my hand that nullifies an attack, so I'm willing to be more risky and play this card and leave my center open because I know I could block an attack uh, next turn. So weapons, they do have power, and weapons can attack anything. They can attack a monster or your opponent, and they have critical. So this weapon, there's no cost to equipping it, and this weapon, it costs 2 gauge. So this weapon has the ability called Penetrate, which means if I attack my opponent's center and they have a monster there, normally you wouldn't be able to attack their life points. But with Penetrate, you if the monster is destroyed, then the damage goes through. So if my opponent has a monster in the center and I kill it with the weapon, then it will still deal 2 damage to your opponent. So in this game you start with 10 life points and um, so this is the life counter you get in the trial deck and you can gain life so on the other side goes up to 20. But you start at 10. So the final card type in this game are called impact cards. So this is the cards that you play during your final phase. So these are sideways as you can see and they have a bunch of restrictions on it of when you can play the card. So this one says pay 2 gauge you can only cast this card if you do not, not have a monster in the center and then for this turn it gives your weapon <clears throat> plus 4000 power and 2 crits and the, the ability penetrate so if the weapon is standing then attack with it so during the final phase my weapon would attack with plus 2 critical and plus 4000 power and penetrate alright so the other thing to the game, so what makes Buddy Fight, Buddy Fight is playing buddies. So at the start of the game, you pick one card out of your deck. It doesn't count towards your 50 card limit, and you play it here, along with your flag. So at any point in the game, if you draw another copy of it in your hand, you can play it. Uh, let me get another copy. So if I draw this card and it's in my hand, then I would play it horizontally like this, and it's called a buddy call. Then I get to pl play it. And any cards that have costs to calling, you still have to pay. But what buddy calling does for you is heal you one damage. It's called a buddy gift. So that's the entire premise, that's the entire gimmick of having a buddy. It's just that if you happen to draw your buddy card, so it's kind of like your avatar like in Vanguard. This makes it more personal with your deck because you can choose any card and that becomes your buddy. So if you happen to draw it in the, during the game, you can call it Buddy Call and call it out normally. And then you gain one life from it and that's it. And you can only do that once per game. So that is the whole gimmick with Buddy Fight or Buddy Calling. It's just to make you feel special about having your one card. It's like your avatar and that's it for that. <clears throat> So normal progression of the game, you draw six cards. Draw six cards, there's no mulligan. And then you put the top two cards into your gauge. So you start with like two resources. And the player that goes first doesn't get to draw and can only attack one time. It can be with a weapon or a monster, but you can only attack once. I'd have my buddy out like this and then after your draw phase which you skip if you go first then you can charge and draw so with this hand since I have two weapons you can only have one weapon equipped at a time I'd probably charge this because I don't need it and then I draw a card and of course I drew another weapon and then I since I have two of these nullify cards in my hand I'd probably be pretty brave and uh, actually, yeah, I'd probably be pretty brave. Play that. 
I have to pay two gauge to equip it and then attack my opponent for two. And then, so next turn, I can uh, play any spells. So these spells have counter, so I can play it to block any of their attacks. And then the next turn, I stand all my units, draw, and then since I don't need a weapon, I'll charge and draw. And now I can play any, uh, you can still play any amount of monsters, but you can only attack once if you go first. So this time, I can play more monsters. So since I have a weapon in the center, I'm going to keep my center open, play a size 2 and a size 1 monster. And then I can choose to attack uh, any monster or any direction. So left doesn't have to just attack across. It can attack anywhere. And then the center can also attack anywhere. And that's pretty much the game. Uh, you just play until you've hit your opponent in the face until they're at zero life. Oh yeah, and then also um, just go over, so if you want to play a monster but you already have a size 3, total of size 3, you can just play it and then retire your old monsters. So as long as you have something to retire, uh, something to replace them with, you can get rid of your monsters. You can't move spots unless it has the the ability called move, which I don't think is available yet, but it'll come out in later sets. And same with weapons. As long as you have another weapon, you can replace the old one with the new one. Um, there is also an ability called link attack, which means you can combine one up two or more of your monsters or weapon to do a combined attack. So let's say my opponent has this size three monster on the other side and this monster has 8,000 defense. So when you attack in buddy fight, you compare your power to the opponent's defense. So if it's the same, equal to or higher, it'll go through. So let's say I attack with this card by itself. It has 7,000 power, but this monster has 8,000 defense, so it wouldn't go through. So then I can do a link attack where I combine the power of the two cards and then attack. So I can combine these guys for a 10,000 attack and then it would be able to destroy my opponent's monster. But since that counts as one attack, they can play like this nullify card because it says nullify the attack. So that would be the link attack would be considered one attack and they could play this to block it completely as long as they uh, can pay the cost and all that. So it's not limited to just two monsters. So you can do it all three if you needed to, or just a monster and a weapon. And I think that is everything. So yeah, that's a pretty quick run through of the game. Game's really simple. Uh, games are really fast. They can be, sometimes you can lose on like second, third, or fourth turn of the game. And then sometimes the games just get... Uh, they get down to the wire and you end up just seeing who can top deck the best card. So if I miss anything or if you have any other questions, just comment down below and I'll try to get to them. Uh, try to answer as many questions as I can. Alright, thanks for watching.